Update. Aida for breaking my fiancé's family tradition by naming my son what I wanted. Original thank you so much to everyone who commented and offered support. A lot has happened since I posted, so I thought I'd give you an update. About a week after my post, my fiancé's parents contacted us. They apologized for their behavior and begged to meet my son. They said they were ready to leave the naming debacle behind and truly wanted to be involved in their grandson's life. We were skeptical, but invited them over to meet the baby. The visit went well. They began coming over almost every day during the next three weeks. I noticed neither of them ever called my son by his name, but I didn't point it out. For the first time in months, things seemed good between my fiancé Andy's parents. One day, my fiancé was helping my Phil with something at our place, so my Mill and I went to the park with my baby. Some time later, I had to go to the bathroom, so I left him in the stroller with her. When I got back, she was sitting on a park bench, chatting with a woman who was cooing over my son. I went over there and introduced myself as, sons. Name, S mom, and she said, I thought his name was Peter. I didn't say a word, and neither did my mill. She followed me to the car and we went back to my apartment. On the way there, I texted my fiancé about what had happened. The moment we got there, he kicked both his parents out of our place, he'd read my texts and confronted his father. Thankfully, my Phil is a terrible liar, and confessed immediately. Apparently, both my in-laws only call my son Peter. That includes whenever they're talking about him, every time they introduce him to someone else, and even baby talking to him on the few occasions they were left alone with him. Neither of them are embarrassed by this, and they both think they're in. The right, we're heartbroken. Especially my fiancé. Not only because his parents can't let go of their pride, but also because the name we chose for our son means a lot to us both. I blame myself for encouraging my fiancé to allow them near our son. I was raised in a different city than all my grandparents and always wished they could have been more involved in my life. Losing my grandmother didn't help. Pretty much every doubt Ehad only existed because I thought it would be important for my son to grow up with all of his grandparents around, but now, all my guilt is gone. If they can't respect my son enough to call him by his name, they didn't deserve to be in his life. I hope they enjoyed the three weeks they had with their grandson. Because that's all they're getting until they get their heads out of their SSES. Aida for refusing to listen to MIL's speech on my wedding? So I hate speeches. I never understood the appeal. I think they are boring, exhausting and very very forced but having said that, this is just my opinion and I never forced it on anyone. I have sat through long excoriating speeches without complaining like any other decent human being. When it was my turn to get married however, I requested no speeches. We wrote that we loved everyone and that we knew they loved us so if you want to say anything say it to us directly, in private. My husband thought it was funny but heck knew my feelings about speeches. We had a small wedding with only loved ones. A weekend long. My husband loves games so the wedding planner did a really great taskmaster type of games and everyone appreciated it. Dinner came and Mill stood up and started by saying, I know we are forbidden to make speeches by the bride but this is my only son getting married so I will day what I want to. I didn't hear the rest because I was seeing red. My sisters and bridesmaids were shocked. I pretended like she wasn't talking and continued my conversation with my girls. They did the same. Mill was furious, both SILs were furious and my husband was very angry that it showed in his profile, he refused to look at me. The rest of the night was awkward. My husband sighed sulking in their seats. I wanted to make sure it wasn't ruined for the rest of us and we ended up having a blast. Next day I spent it with my family and friends. My husband said that I was very wrong in what IDID. I couldn't force Mill to STFU and he knew she wouldn't no matter how much we told her. I should have they've disrespected and humiliated her like this. Our marriage started on the wrong foot it seems. Aida, P.S. Mill loves making speeches, sometimes 15 minutes long and not unusually mean speeches, disguised as humor that often isn't appreciated at all by the speaker. Aida for making my son shower before he comes to my house because of his sister's peanut allergy and not letting him come over when he didn't. I have a son, 14M, with my ex-husband, as well as a daughter, 12F, with my current partner. My daughter has one of the most severe peanut allergies her doctors have ever seen. To give you an idea, someone touching a peanut, touching someone else, that person touching a surface, and then my daughter touching that surface would cause a reaction, and has before. Because of this we have to take precautions beyond what's normal for a peanut allergy. 
We can't eat out, we deep clean the house frequently, and any guests have to wash their hands when they come over and avoid touching stuff. It's a lot and I can understand my son being frustrated, but the issue at hand has to do with his father's house. My son also has two young half-brothers at his father's house, who unsurprisingly eat a lot of peanut butter and the like. Obviously we can't police what another house does, but it does mean my son has to take additional measures to keep his sister safe. Chiefly, he has to shower immediately before leaving to go to my house, otherwise he could have contamination. This is because as I said just him being in that house and then touching. Things could cause a reaction for his sister. He didn't do that last week, he showered, but only the morning of, several hours before I picked him up. He refused to shower again, so I couldn't bring him and had to leave him at his father's. Now, his father is accusing me of favoritism, and claims I'm abandoning my son. He also said some very homophobic things about my partner, also a woman. And said I'm being obsessive. I ate after expecting to be invited to the wedding? I had a friend from a previous job get engaged and asked me for a favor. I left that previous job to work at an upscale hotel. She asked me to get hair and her bridesmaids discounted hotel rooms. I was able to swing about 10 suites for a very decent price compared to what they would normally sell for. Now her and I weren't as close since I left the previous job we both worked at but we would. Text frequently, just couldn't see each other duetto conflicting work schedules. Timeline wash honestly pretty rushed, she was engaged and was soon to get married less than two months later. The whole thing was expedited since her fiancé was in the military and soon to be on deployment. The way Shay said it is she couldn't accompany him unless they were married. Her and I are talking and I had asked what the theme was for the wedding so I knew what to wear. She awkwardly said I wasn't invited. I was surprised I wasn't invited out of at least courtesy for doing her a favor with the wedding block. She said she just couldn't afford to include anyone else. It wasn't a small venue either. Her invitalist alone, not including the grooms, was over one. Hundred, varying from close family, friends, and very distant relatives. I let her know I didn't understand since it was such a large, lavish event how she couldn't squeeze one more person. She said it was impossible and they were at the top of their budget. I said if that was the case then they would need to find other accommodations for their wedding as I was. Giving them an extreme discounted rate due to our friendship. Now the bridesmaids are calling me Thesshole for cancelling their rooms. Aida, TL, DR, I cancelled my friend's wedding block since I wasn't invited. Edit 1. I appreciate all the comments and I can see clearly with the ESH assessment. I want to clarify that if this was a small ceremony with just close family and friends I wouldn't have been as hurt. We haven't been as close as we used to so I wouldn't they've disagreed. The matter of hand though is when IT comes to inviting a hundred people, that I wasn't even considered on the list seems disrespectful. Edit 2. I'm the general manager of the property, my boss is the owner of many other properties. As long as we exceed our projected revenue for the month and all is well. The rate I was offering was not a standard group rate but significantly lower. About $100 a night for the suites. Edit 3. After the blowout, I heard from one of my old co-workers that was invited to the wedding that before everything went sideways, the bride was bragging on how much money she was saving with my discount and how it can be put into more expensive decorating, flowers, ECT. So not inviting me because of budgeting seemed like a poor excuse after the fact. Aida for telling my sister she needs to pay for childcare or I'm not going to her wedding. My F25 sister's wedding F28 is in a couple months. She recently sent out inventions. I was invited as a regular guest, not a bridesmaid or mo since we live a state apart and obviously there's a certain level of involvement and time that goes into being part of a bridal party, which I understand. I want to be there for my sister and obviously I'd like to see her get married. But the problem is. I'm a single mom. My son is six and when he's not at school I need to be home watching him. So being out for hours at a time isn't really in the cards for me right now. My sister's wedding is child free. Since it's taking place in her state, I'd need to commute and I'd probably have to be gone from my house for two full days. I can't have family watch my son since they'll all be at the wedding. And I don't really have friends who will babysit for two days. I contacted my sister and asked if she'd be willing to let my son come to the wedding with me, and explained he couldn't be left alone so young and that I didn't have anyone to watch him. She responded by telling me her no children policy was strict and she wouldn't make exceptions. 
I explained my situation again, and said I'd need some form of childcare or to bring him with me. It then asked her if she would pay me to hire a nanny or babysitter to watch him. She got offended, and said, children and weddings are both parts of life, and I need to, just figure it out, it's my kid, my. Problem. Which sure that's true, but also, her wedding, her making it a problem by not allowing Mato bring my kid. I told her she could either pay for my child career or I wouldn't be going to her wedding. Which all she did was call me, ridiculous, and, entitled. She said she shouldn't have to pay for my child and that part of being an adult is knowing how to take care of that kind of thing. I think that's ridiculous. Money is tight. Childcare is expensive. I can't magically afford for someone to watch my six-year-old and most people would just let me bring him to the wedding. My sister says she's definitely not paying for childcare, and, I guess you're not going to the wedding then. My whole family is mad at me for not being there for my sister. Aida? Edit. I think some people are misunderstanding the post so I'll be more clear. I'm not trying to force my sister to pay for anything, and it's totally fine if I can't come, she accepts that, and I just don't go. It only became a problem when my entire family came after me for not going to the wedding. I'm not mad at my sister for not paying. I'm mad at her for turning the family against me and saying, me, doesn't want to come to the wedding, and complaining about me behind my back to my parents. She complained about me not going to the wedding as if I was purposely avoiding it.